what are we? Uh, we're a global exploration company. We specialize in the unconventional. Uh, we have two huge projects, one in Australia I'll talk about in detail, and one in South Africa. Um, and our strategy is pretty simple. Acquire the acreage, we've done that. Farm it out, we've either done it or in the process of doing it. Enhance those assets to a point where we ultimately are sellers. We're not looking as a company to take any of our assets through to the production stage. We want to increase value, yes, for our shareholders, but ultimately we are selling those assets rather than taking mint production. We do have a healthy cash balance as a junior company with over $10 million in the bank. Now, most of you, it's nice to know what we are, but in this current climate, it's probably as important to know what we are not. For example, we don't have any production, so we're not affected at all by the current oil price. We have no debt, so we've got no banker stress. And I'm sure many of you in the room, and certainly you'll be reading in the media over the next months of companies, particularly in the junior space, coming under serious stress from the bankers. And I'm sure all of you know, even on a personal level, where that banker stress can take its toll. Only a couple of months ago on a Monday morning, I rang my own personal bank looking to speak with the manager. Oh, Mr. O'Quigley, I'm sorry to tell you, but Mr. Murphy, he died at the weekend. Oh, gosh, sorry. So Tuesday morning, I rang the bank. How can I speak to Mr. Murphy, the manager? What well, I'm sorry, Mr. Quigley, didn't you hear? He, he died at the weekend. Oh, right, sorry. So Wednesday morning, rang the bank again. Hi, Mr. Quigley here. Can I speak to Mr. Murphy, the manager? But Mr. Quigley, didn't you ring me on Monday? Yes. Didn't you ring me on Tuesday? Yes. Didn't I tell you the manager died? I know, but I just love to hear it. <laughs> so, we don't have the banker stress. We've actually no, we've no capital commitments. Um, we have no funding requirements, and we, therefore we won't be issuing any equity in the company any time in the near future, even beyond the near future. Now, as much as I want to talk about what we are and what we are not, most of you want to know what can we become and really in terms of what can the share price look like. And if you look at our share graph, particularly since the beginning of this year, yeah, we've been trending along and then there's this huge spike in May. And everybody asks me, what happened to the company in May? And they've looked at the website, they can't see any announcements. Two words happened, Keith and Schaefer. <laughs> and he produced this very interesting publication back on, on May the 6th, which saw almost a 100% increase in our share price and you'll see the volume here, something in the order of six million shares traded hands, which clearly indicates that at least one of you read his report. <laughs> um, but where are we going? And by the end of this few minutes of the presentation, hopefully you'll see where we're going to take this company in terms of its value appreciation, in terms of delivering on our very, very simple strategy in, in, in getting these assets to a point where we're going to sell and create huge shareholder value for all of us. So let's talk about our two key assets. And in this case, size really, really does matter. And we have two enormous assets, totaling 12.5 million acres, Australia and uh, in the Karoo in South Africa. That's all very well to talk about, you know, we've got something equivalent to North America. It's kind of a grandiose statement, but truly we do. You look at the names on this slide and these well-known North American shale plays, and you look at the, sc the scale they are at in terms of their acreage, up to 7 million acres or six million or two million acres. You look what we have, four and a half, 4.6 million acres in the Beetaloo in Australia, Northern Territory, and seven and a half million acres in the Karoo in South Africa. Nice to have the acreage, but not any not good if it doesn't have the resource potential. Again, you look across the North American, huge resource numbers across the Bakken and the Barnets. And what have we got? 21 billion barrels potential in Australia and 162 TCF. So we have the scale in terms of resource potential, we have the acreage. But what good is that if you cannot, particularly in an unconventional setting, you don't have the key attributes to exploit your unconventional resources commercially? A couple of key early indicators would be TOC, otherwise known as total organic carbon. Again, you see these great North American plays, 4 to 5% TOCs. The back end, of course, the exception at, at 12. And where are we at? The four to five. 
And then lastly, when you're, when you're pursuing an unconventional play, it's the latest in horizontal technology you need to deploy. And to do that, you need a good thick shale sequence to go after. Thick as in 30 meters, 100 feet thick would be nice to have. What have we got? 150 in the Beetaloo and between 50 and 100 meters in South Africa. So we feel we've got all the ingredients. And what we've done in Australia in particular, and I'll talk a little bit more about Australia, which is our 4.6 million acres. We did the first of our pharma deals we concluded last year, a $200 million deal. We brought in two companies, Origin, a big Australian company, Sasol, an even bigger South African company. And they've come in with Origin as operating to a $200 million deal where they fully carry Falcon through a whole nine well program over four years. No CapEx exposure whatsoever to Falcon. Drilling already started. We finished our first well over a month ago. Second well, we're due to finish that in the next week or two weeks. We'll be announcing shortly. And we'll drill a third well this year. We'll then move into 2016, continue to drill again, and then on to 2017 and 2018. Fully carried, no exposure. In fact, even with the first five wells, there's not even a cap on the estimates here of the 22 million and the 44 million. So for the first 64 million, it doesn't matter what it costs the partners. There's no exposure to Falcon. We don't have to write a check, even in a cost overrun scenario. In addition, there's no scenario for Origin or Sasol. If they wake up tomorrow morning, they don't like the price of oil, they don't like what they see on the ground, they are committed to this project. It's a drill or pay contract. So they're committed to this all the way through, at least until 2017. In terms of what do we find in the first well we announced just over a month ago, probably better than we expected, and certainly as much as we would have hoped to have got from all of the first three wells we've actually found in the very first well. Big, thick pay intersections, elevated gas readings throughout, high TOC potential. As I said, the second well will hopefully confirm up this, this first well. We're then into assessing where we might start a horizontal drilling program in 2016 and take this project to a stage where Falcon can seriously sit, consider selling it. Very quickly on South Africa, I can talk more about this in the booth afterwards. I am here all day until the bar opens. Um, and this is a huge play, seven and a half million acres. We've got a nice neighbor, a little company called Shell, who came in shortly after we acquired our first seven and a half million acres. Uh, estimated by the EIA to be the fifth largest shale play in the world, and we own it all, at least the seven and a half million acres. We are in cooperation partnership with Chevron, uh, who may come in as our farming partner. We're working through with the government. I chair the Oil and Gas Association of South Africa, so I'm working quite closely with the government, the minister, his department, in finalizing the fiscal regime of South Africa for the industry. So we'll hope to get our, ex our license here quite shortly. What does it all translate to? And you come back to strategy I talked about. Ultimately, as a company, we are sellers, not developers of our assets. That's a key fundamental difference between us and many other companies. And we look to sell when we've taken these through the farm out, when we've got closer to the completion of that farm out, when we've enhanced massively the value for our shareholders. Industry then hopefully will come, and certainly I'll be talking to industry as I do on a monthly basis uh, to, take, to acquire this, ha this asset and then we will be um, you know, having a, a quite a big payday for our, for our shareholders. In terms of what's happening in the next, and I can talk more about this in the, in the booth afterwards, positive news flow, quite a lot of it coming up in terms of drilling results. We're drilling in Australia. We've got four or five more wells to be drilled in the next short period. And obviously, exploration licenses in South Africa. Uh, but please feel free to come and talk to me on any of these topics afterwards. And then lastly, just our corporate information as to shares outstanding, 900 million. As I said earlier, we're not issuing anymore. We've got a good, strong, very, very supportive shareholder base and enough cash that we don't need to be worried about going to shareholders to raise money for the next three to four years. So thank you all very much.